Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the ranch. Wes here. So today we're going to take you around the farm and give you a nice little tour, show you the animals and show you the different areas. Going to do some aerial with the drone so you guys can kind of follow along on our journey here and understand where we're at on the ranch with our operations. So hopefully it makes more sense to you. Okay, we're going to go take you folks around the ranch and show you what we got going here. Let's do it. Kona, you stay. Hey, all right. Looks like we're trying to actually get going now. It takes a lot to get everybody. Uh, mister, I was on the phone. Shut up. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So first things first, we're going to show you here. This is the house. Some of you folks that have been following us, you've seen this on our build. It's been on hold now for quite some time. Among other reasons, finances are always one of them, but we are putting all kinds of effort into everything else around here and not it at the moment. And this is home sweet home. We got <laughs> campers and the bathhouse. Oh yeah, we got the wall tent over there. We're still living like hobos, but you know what? Life is good. Yeah, it's like camping every day. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's like, I'm over it. It's time for the house to be finished. <laughs> okay, so this is the power line pasture, we call it. It's right off on the highway. It was cleared by the power company, obviously, to allow access. Now, what we had, we had the cattle on in there this spring, and we held them for an about additional month and fed hay. So you can see it's greening up really good. Hopefully all that Im animal impact will really increase its fertility. So we're gonna move now forward and head up to the front. We're gonna show you all the front pastures. Our bull, one of our gildings, he's up here in this front. All right, so right here, that is all buttercup. So not desirable. You don't wanna see that on your land. So that's the holding pens. Here's our super awesome air equip. We shoot. I think it's worth its weight in gold. I'll tell you what. Ooh, it's getting thick. Yeah. Looks like a hayfield almost. All right, this is what they've just grazed. And we're working across here. We're keeping these two separated because Mouse, that gelding right there, he is being worked by Trinity and trained. And that bull, that's Bruno. That's the famous Bruno. He's our herd sire. He's a great animal. Really, really pleased with him he's given us some amazing calves so this is what we call our arena pasture it's where trinity does most of her riding you can see the round pen in the back and yes unfortunately we are on a paved road out here it makes it great for the access to the ranch but you know it does add noise hearing cars go by every once in a while all right we're leaving the arena pasture and entering what we call our silvo pasture silvo meaning uh, the transitionary zone between grasslands and wooded areas kind of like a savanna. So as you can see, we got a lot of trees down here, mostly black walnuts. So we're coming up to what we call the snake pit. Here we go, it's a big old hole that was excavated out in the creek that runs underneath the road here. Flows into it. I somehow just named it the snake pit. I think we might have seen a snake down here and it's a deep hole, so hence the <laughs> snake pit. I'll show you some aerial view of it, but just on the other side of this creek here, this is our island pasture, called island because it's split off. It's only uh, maybe an acre and it's separated by this creek bottom here. So this creek that you're looking at confluences just on the other side over there along with the main creek channel that runs down here. You oh, ham. Say hi. 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 You can see all the recent rains we had that the, the water in this creek was all the way up and all these leaves you can see here right now. That was where the high flow came from. Deposited all this out in the pasture. I mean, this thing was ripping. All right, another glance at the silvo pasture here. Now we're gonna be entering what we refer to as our bottom pasture. Now we have all these pastures uh, fairly segregated and broken up with some high tensile wire. Um, this one here is in really rough shape. We need to do some work on it. We had some critters run through it and bust it up pretty bad. Here we go, we're entering so-called bottom pack and if you look way up there you can see on the right hand side of the screen you can see my folks house way out there in the distance and the corner of our house so that's where we just came from so here's the other creek <laughs> that we were talking about that uh, this is kind of the main channel and just over here down over there on the kids property these two creeks come together 
I'm gonna dry back up this bottom pasture. All right, we've got, we try to develop trails to a certain extent, like you can see here, instead of driving out on all the new forage and flattening it. You know, it's kind of, I hate driving on my grass. <laughs> I absolutely hate it, but kind of necessary. We can't fly. <laughs> Here is our upper crossing of the creek, and as you can see, it's flowing nicely. What a, what a beautiful thing. It was dry just a couple weeks ago. It wasn't flowing at all. We've been in this massive drought. I've probably said that a thousand times, but I'll keep reiterating what a blessing it is to have all this water. You might notice if you, uh, if you watch one of our other videos we're going to be coming out with soon, that right in this area, we spread a bunch of hay by hand because there was almost no vegetation here. It was pretty much bare dirt. And uh, so this will be that area. You'll see that video of how we, you know, rejuvenated the ground here and got something to start growing again. Look at that. Now this, this is spring fed and it's a seasonal spring. So when we're really, really dry, it doesn't flow. I made this dam here a year ago and you can see it's starting to vegetate nicely, but it's clear water. It's just absolutely beautiful. Again, water impoundment, folks, super important. If you can impound water on your ground, and I'll keep saying this, you'll hear me in videos say it a lot. If you can impound water on your ground, you know, of course, legally, you will increase your base flow, which is that surface aquifer, and it'll just continue feeding all your land water and make you more productive for longer periods of time, especially during drought. All right, another area that was terribly overgrazed last year, but is really coming back. I'm very happy with the way it's looking. You can see it's not very dense, but we have coverage, so. We actually have grass on all this stuff. All right, so this is what we call the horse pasture. And we call it the horse pasture because two of our old trusty steeds we actually had to put down over the last year and a half, two years, and uh, they're buried both of them right over there. So we have a little, little grave site, little memorial for them. They were excellent horses and they were part of the family. You bring up sadness. Well, it is sad. But they lived a good life and they, uh, you know, they took Hi. one of them in particular. Old Gizmo, he really took care of my girls when they were learning and coming up on horses. He was an excellent horse. And then old Boomer, old big old black perch run. He, he was took a, care of Grayson. He was a really good horse, yeah. It's it's hard to see him go. All right, coming up to the end of the horse pasture, we got a little crossing up here. Kona's showing us the way, thank you. So this is what we're entering. This is referred to as the spring pasture. This is the head of that spring creek that we just showed you. It just wells up out of the ground, right over there. We'll take you to it. Oh, geez. Oh, no, down, down, down. They're living the best life a dog can live, though, I'll tell you what. We basically just made a loop. We're coming back up here and you can see my folks house up there on the left. All right, so here we go. This is the start of the Spring Creek right there. Absolutely love this spring. When it runs, it doesn't always. This is referred to as this spring pasture all the way down to, oh, another 50 yards in front of me. And then we go to the house pasture, which is the one obviously below our house that is incomplete. Yeah, the grass down here is lush. I mean, it is thick. There's some tonnage here. You can hear the water. Big runoff. We get a lot of runoff right up here. And this whole area stays marshy after a rain for a pretty extended period of time. So again, just a lot of diversity here. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that helps you beat drought, right? And this is what she's doing in the back. Turn your phone sideways. There. <laughs> Mocking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that'll probably make the video edit, I'm sure. Here we go. Here's our orchard slash garden and all the rest of the mess that's up there. It's like a construction disaster. There's the old root cellar. We got plastic over the top to prevent water from infiltrating it. And the Spring Creek coming back out. And there's the little dam up there we just crossed. There's more. Oh, Lord. Oh, they found us. They found us. We're only missing Lady now. Oh, poor Lady. Hey, look. There goes the beaver. He looks like a beaver. He just floats. He's so fat. Oh, yeah. He loves to swim. And you notice there's no panic in his swimming because he just floats. He's a bobber. He can. I've actually seen him stop swimming and he just floats. It, he doesn't even need a paddle. It's amazing. His buoyancy is great. <laughs> yeah, my toes, they're getting wet. All right, this is what we call our bottom hill pasture. We've already grazed this right here this season. 
and it is well as you can see it looks like it's just about fully recovered already so it's been about uh, three and a half weeks or so a lot of buck brush in here we're gonna be getting that handled with biological means we're bringing in sheep to the farm and that should really help with defoliating buck brush and other undesirables and turn it into protein there's the hillside it doesn't look like much on camera it's it's pretty big it goes way up there we're looking at about oh from there so there's roughly 15 17 acres something like that and now we're approaching the kids property over here i spent about 100 machine hours over here mowing and cleaning this place up it was a disaster what are you doing we found a red potato <laughs> That's yeah, a cicada. cicada. Pick it up. Bring it over here. Ugh. Pick it up. No. Oh, pick You're it up. Like pick it cool. up. I ain't touching it. Oh, you baby. Some oh, farm God. kid you are. Oh, Come on. Get it. Let's get it. Should I put it on Kelly? Yeah. Look, there it is. Oh, its legs are so sticky. Oh, yeah. It's like a massive Pet. house fly. We're coming through here. Now we're crossing on to the 62 acres the kids have over here. And this is where I've been just mowing like a crazy person. Didn't do much on this side, left most of the roses. These are multiflora roses. Uh, they're great habitat for birds and wildlife. You definitely want to keep them under control. We have a big mower, so they're easy to take out if they do get a little too rowdy. All right, coming up on the hill here, you can see way up there next to that gate, that is the well that's on this property. No power to it, but we function tested it here a few days back and it works beautifully. Yes, I should probably mention that we are now operating on roughly, give or take, about 192 acres. So for anybody who is curious about that, you know, it, it's, it's a good spread. You know, it's really starting to, I think we're gonna be able to carry a lot of animals and uh, actually be a profitable operation, not just, you know, hobbies. Okay, there's the well. Very important part of infrastructure on this. That was a real blessing to be able to purchase land that has a functioning well. Well, if we put power to it. So we mowed this all out and uh, left a lot of trees, but still mowed probably four or five thousand saplings off of this property. There she is in all our glory. The bass pond. Man, it's looking good. It is getting full, full, full. They're calling for like two more inches of rain for us in the next week or so. So we might end up with a totally full pond. Oh no! That was big, whatever that was. That might be a turtle. I don't know, but that thing is massive. All right, I'm going to take you folks over here and show you this vista. It is, it's pretty awesome. It's beautiful over here. There we go. This is the backside of the 60 acres. It's really starting to turn into something. A lot of grass trying to come in. We're going to have some very productive fields over here with an adequate rest. The dogs are approved, don't you guys? Come here. Let's go. Come on. Heading back up the hill here, and we're going to drop in on the other side of the ranch. Cattle are on the top of the hill. What are you doing? Hi. All right, so keep looking, and you're going to see the difference as soon as we transition to the other side of the farm. And you should notice a pretty stark difference between this side and the other side. And all that is is just a little bit of management. Here we go. And just like that, you know, one fence line away. Grass. Management. That's all it is. Management. Taking, putting your animals tight, put them on for short durations with severe grazing, and then let it rest a really long time. That's all you gotta do. So this is the top of the hill. We just call this our hill pastures, front and backside. What are you doing, you convict? You have followers. What are you doing? This little girl is a unique creature. She just is so tame. It's just a, she's just a people cow. All right, so you saw the land that we have here. And, you know, to some this might seem strange, but this is the paddock they're in. I mean, this little bit of white wire you see up here and just past where the cattle are bedded down, this is it. It's the whole thing. This is probably uh, 35 feet wide, 40 feet maybe on average, and 150 feet long. They'll be in here for, oh, probably another three or four hours till they go ahead and and graze this down and then we're going to move them again over one paddock and just keep going that way we still have to circle the whole top of this this field up here we've only gone around it once thus thus far and it took us uh 15 days to get around it and that was with the current forage that we had on the ground and we've grown so much more in the last two weeks so we're going to be moving through this really really slow we're going to have so much grass we won't even know what to do with it which is a good problem i'll tell you what that's exciting after two droughts boy Whew. 
Oh, excitable, huh? Great. Now the cows are all up. They're like, oh God, we're getting attacked. What are you doing, you little turd? Where are you going? She's just being wily. Oh, she's got the she's got the zoomies. We're gonna show you guys the last of the hillside. All right, so we're completing the circuit now. We're gonna head down this hill. You will see the frog pond that we call it here coming up on the right hand side. And there's what we call the frog pond, which is no longer a frog pond. It's super healthy, really clean water, and very full. This rain. Oh, awesome. Actually, I want to show everybody something quick. Okay, so for a little bit of perspective on the challenges of ranching or farming down here in the Ozark, well, this. Now you see this? This is this is our little road going up there. This is not imported. This is actually native soils here. All that rock, and that is growing on that. It's unbelievable. Get him! Go get him! What the hell? That's a pond turtle. You want to pet him? They've been out like crazy lately. Oh, it's really pretty. Yeah, they are. All right, so this is kind of the last coming down the hill here. There's the, the little pasture, we call it, back in there. And earlier, we took you folks across the creek and down that bottom fence line, looking up on this hillside. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed that. I'm here hanging out in the nursery. Uh, 971. You got milk mustache? Oh, no. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, got a little better sense of the lay of the land and what we're working with here. So, well, at any rate, 971 and I say have a good one. We sure appreciate y'all. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out. That way you'll know every time we drop a new video. We really appreciate you guys. Have a good one.